Parshas Devarim, Shabbos Chazoyin, Tov Shenayin Gimel, our yearly uh, move to out to lunch once a year, and we actually thought that we wouldn't have to do it this year. But unfortunately, Mashiach hasn't come yet. We're most of the way through the nine days. And uh, this Tuesday, unless we do something about it, and we'll try to discuss a few ways that maybe we could try to help that uh, Witaka will not have to fast this Tisha B'Av. We still have a few days to work it out. This week also, on Sunday of this week, is actually the yard site of the Nesiv Shalom. So while w- every year when we come here we're a little down and we're realizing that we might have to fast Tisha B'Av, on the other hand, we, we look back and we think of the godless of the Nesiv Shalom and the Svarim that he put out and the Shiurim that he gave and how much light it is bringing actually into the world today. And the spectrum of people that learn the Siva Shalom goes from way over on the right to way over on the left. There's every segment of Kla Yisrael is learning the Siva Shalom today. And it's a tremendous chus and shataka be his chus for the Siva Shalom. Before we get started also, I'd just like to mention that tonight's shir is should be a chus for... Uh, for uh, Leia Fega Bracha Bas Sora, who unfortunately, a young woman who is ill, and we're going to try to have in mind that it should be a schus for her. The Gemara says in the Sechta Yuma, Daftes Omid Beis, Bayis Rishoin, Mipnei Macharav, why was the first base of Mikdash destroyed? Mipnei Shahoyu Boy, Avoy Dezora, Gile Arayas, Ushvichas Domim. The Klal Yisrael was doing some very, very serious Averis, and because of that, the first Beis Hamikdash was destroyed. But by Shemi, Mipnei Machar, why was the second Beis Hamikdash destroyed? Mipnei Sinas Chinam. It was destroyed because of Sinas Chinam. <laughs> and the Gemara continues and says a very interesting thing. Rishoinim Shenis Galo Avoinam. Misgala Kitzam. At the first base of Mikdash, they knew the Averis that they did, and they also knew that the Golos would be 70 years. And after that, they would get permission to build the second base of Mikdash. But Achroinim, Shaloi Nisgala Avoinim, Loi Nisgala Kitzam. That we still do not know today from the base of Mikdash that was des- destroyed because of Sinas Chinam we still do not know when this Golos will end. We don't know how long it's going to be. So really, what's Pshat in this whole member of the Gemara? The first Beis HaMikdosh, where they were over Averois Chamurois, they were told that the Golos is for 70 years. And for Sinas Chinam, which technically, really, without looking at the ramifications and all the things behind it, but Sinas Chinam is technically only a lav in the Torah. And because of that, we still have no idea when the Golos is going to end. We've davened that Mashiach should come for almost 2,000 years now. There have been so many tears, so much bloodshed over 2,000 years, and still today in Tav Shanayin Gimel, almost 2,000 years later, we still have no idea how we are going to end and when this Golos is going to end. It's brought down in the Torah Sa'avos that Chazal tell us in the Gemara, in Masechus Rosh Hashanah, Daf Yud Ches Omod Aleph, that there are two psukim that we have to look at. One pasuk says, Mi Kashem Alekeinu Bechol Koreinu Elov. From this pasuk we see that one can always approach and communicate with HaKadosh Baruch Hu. And then Zok the Gemara, there's another pasuk. This pasuk you're familiar with, we learned it in the Torah and the Tzibor, Yerushu Hashem Bihimotzoi. And from that pasuk it's mashma that a person should seek out Hashem. When? You seek out Hashem when HaKadosh Baruch Hu is close. One pasuk says HaKadosh Baruch Hu is accessible at all times. The other pasuk, only when Hashem is close. So we reconcile that by saying the following. A rabbim is considered... Bechol Koreinu Elov. There's a difference between a Yochid and a Rabbim. A Rabbim always has 
the opportunity to come to Kodesh Baruch Hu. The Gemara answers, <laughs> Kand B'tzibur, Kand B'yochid. A Yochid could only reach a Kodesh Baruch Hu B'yimotzoi. Only when a Kodesh Baruch Hu is close. So now we can understand why by the Golos of Bayes Rishon, the Golos was a Golos with, with a finite period of time. Because they did not have this problem of Sinas Chinam. Kla Yisrael at that time, though they were being over Averis Chamurais, but Akarish Baruch was willing to look in a certain way that Kla Yisrael was Ba'achdus. They were a Tzibur. And if they're a Tzibur, then they're in the gather of Bechol Koreinu Elav. That they were able to be Mispalal, even with the Avoinus Chamurais, they were able to ask Akarish Baruch Hu, please take us out of this Golos. And Akarish Baruch Hu was right there. Bechol Koreinu Elav. But when it came to the second, when it came to the second Beis Hamikdash, the Sbayasheni was not so. They had sinas chinam, and they were separate, and they were yechidim. So they would have to wait for Hakadosh Baruch Hu to be close. The Yeshu Hashem behimotz oy, and you know what? At that point, Hakadosh Baruch Hu was not close. The only time Hakadosh Baruch Hu would come close is when there would be a tikkun, and for that tikkun to fix up. Sinas Chinam, almost 2,000 years later, we still haven't learned the lesson, obviously. Because had we learned the lesson, Mashiach would have come. The Siva Shalom says, he says it many times in the Sefer from the Kabrina Rav, Zechet Tzadik Levracha, on the Pasuk, we've mentioned this before, by the Benois Tzlovcha, the Pasuk <coughs> says, Lama Yigora Shem Avinu Mi Mishpachtoi. The Benois Tzlovcha were daughters only, there were no sons in the family, and they wanted, they spoke to Moshe Rabbeinu, they wanted to receive a nachla, a peace in Eretz Yisrael. And they said, Lama yigor Hashem avinu mi mishpachtoi. So the Kabrina Rav says, a beautiful pshat on this pasuk. It says that HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls himself avinu. We know HaKadosh Baruch Hu is our father, but there's a, there's a catch. HaKadosh Baruch Hu calls himself avinu when we are mishpachtoi. Lama yigor Hashem avinu mi mishpachtoi. HaKadosh Baruch Hu is only Avinu when we act as family. Then HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Avinu, and if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Avinu, then we are the Bonim. A very interesting Sefer, Netzach Yisrael, it's a Sefer from the, from the Maharal. It's just a, a mamish, an unbelievable thing. He says, Kalal Yisrael, we know, is always called Bonim. No matter what we do, we spoke about it a few weeks ago, remember we spoke about Ben Kach, Ben Kach, no matter what a person does, you don't lose your shame, Ben. Kla Yisrael is always called Bonim. So the Yetzirah has a very, very important thing that he will never let us do. The Yetzirah, Zokta Maral, makes it his utmost business at all times to promote Machloikis more than anything else. It's the biggest koyach that the Yetzirah, he puts his, the most energy into that. That there should never be Sholem, never be Achdus in Kla Yisrael. And that's what the Yetzirah wants. Because when we're together, the Yetzirah knows. When we're together, HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Avinu. And then if HaKadosh Baruch Hu is Avinu, then like we said, Bechol Koreinu Elav. Within no time, we could put the Golas to an end. If we're together, if Taka Klai Yisrael was always Ba'achlis, and the Yetzirah knows that. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu would have to be Merachem on us, Kirachem of Albonim. And HaKadosh Baruch Hu would definitely do it. And the Yetzirah knows that. So the Maral knew this many, many years ago. And how much more so does it apply to us today, hundreds of years later, where we're still doing the same thing? The Yetzirah, it seems, I think all the time, it seems to me that the Yetzirah has said like this in our generation. The Yetzirah said, you look at, in, in, in Eretz Yisrael, look at the United States, look at Europe, look any place in the world. The Yetzirah has sort of said, you know what, no problem. Learn all the Torah you want. And you know what else? You can do all the chesed you want. No, no problem. Learn Torah. Do vast amounts of chesed. Anything, anything but achdos. Anything except being misakin sinas chinam. And that's precisely the reason we were sent into Golas. We were sent into Golas because we didn't understand that. We didn't understand that part of being Odom And that's exactly what we need to fix. And that is exactly, precisely what the Eitzharad does not want us to fix. By the Mishkan, the Pasuk says, Ve'asu li mikdash. 
when we when we came to when Akash when the Tzivoy to build the Mishkan and then the further generations that's the the blueprint also for the Beis Hamikdash the pasuk says Vaasuli Mikdash Alash and Rabim but by the Kalea Mishkan if you notice except for the Aron it says Vaasisa Alash and Yachid you should build Zok to Nesiva Shalom that by the Inyanim by the Mishkan and by the Aron which also is Balash and Rabim which represents Torah. We have to know that it's contingent on the Achdus of Klai Yisrael. You want to have a Beis HaMikdash. You want a Taka Biyelba to learn Torah. You want to learn Torah the way it should be. You want to reach your full potential in Torah. You have to be a mensch. You have to have Achdus. You have to drop the Sinas Chinam. You have to forget the petty arguments that you have with other people for just a while. It's glib- the Torah and the Mishkan are given, are given to Klai Yisrael, not to Yechidim. So the Chorben, Zoktan Siva Shalom, the Chorben says, it, it didn't actually just come from Chait. We had Sinas Chinam. But he says, it's not like in the first base of Mikdash where it came from the Chatoim of the Averis Chamurois. He says that the Sinas Chinam causing the destruction of the second base of Mikdash was for a different reason. It's because we cut the lifeline that keeps the base of Mikdash going. Not shadows because of the Avera of Sinas Chinam. Yes, in Azkinam, it's taka true. It's only a lav in the Torah, like Sisnam Zachicha Bavavecha. It's taka only a lav in the Torah, but that wasn't the point. That wasn't what brought the Beis HaMikdash down. What brought the Beis HaMikdash down was cutting off the lifeline. The lifeline of Klal Yisrael is one of Achdus. So the question we have to ask ourselves is, what are we going to do this year to change that? We gave this type of shear last year, the year before, the year before. This is, I think, uh, this is our fourth year. And each time we get together, we say, this is it. Next year, the shear is going to be in Yerushalayim. And hopefully we'll have a nice place over there. And it'll taka be able to be, maybe we'll also have a meat restaurant then. I don't know. But it'll taka be a place <coughs> where in the nine days we're going to be leading up to Yontif. And what are we going to change this year? We spent the last year, every day you hear, you watch, <coughs> families are breaking up. Friends are breaking up. You see a shul, next thing you know, there's two shuls. You see yeshiva, I, and that's one of the things you don't want to say, we want Torah, we want it to be more Torah, but we want families, we want brothers to stick together. You know, you have a, you have a shul, then there's two shuls. You have a yeshiva, there's two yeshivas. You have a, one place, a family, all of a sudden, half the family is here, half the family is there, and it's going on and on and on, and we just don't get it. We don't get it that we're doing exactly what the Yetzirah wants. Again, plenty of Torah, you can learn all you want, you can do all the chesed you want, but just not. Don't let brothers, sisters, parents, families, everybody, as much machlaikis as you can do, take the longest amount of time to reconcile, to make things work out. Anything except for avas chinam. Anything except for achdos. So that's the lesson we really have to learn. We're coming now, Shabbos Chazoin. We're going to read, we're going to start doing the, we're going to read the Haftoyer this week in the melody, in the sad melody of Eicha. And that's when, when Shabbos Chazoin hits and you hear when the, when the, uh, when the Balkoire starts to say, Shimu Shemayim Azini Eretz, when we start hearing uh, the, the tune of Eicha, we know that it's coming. And it has to remind us that every single, it can't work unless everybody does it. Because if you have one bad, one sour apple could spoil an entire basket here. So let's talk of begin to learn the lessons. We have a few more days even if we're not speaking to the whole world, and some, some people may watch this shir after Tisha B'Av is over, so they may not hear it before Tisha B'Av. But all of us sitting here, in Baruch Hashem, we have a very big crowd here today, so we, all the emissaries, we go out and we say, we're not going to fall, we're not going to fall into what we did the last few years. We should talk of to a year of Geula, of Achtos, and talk next year's shir, and the shir from here on in, from here on in beginning right away, should begin to be in Yerushalayim, Yerach